Hello again, welcome back. We've come to the final video in the restoration series of the Saba Freiburg W2 tube radio, 1952. And I've got to tell you, this is amazing. The result has been incredible, both in uh, the restoration of the actual electronics as well as the woodwork. If you saw the first uh, installment, you'll remember that um, I was actually a little skeptical because everything looked a little bit too good to be true. And um, so I was waiting for some really nasty surprises. And the only one I really got was um, in the def defective uh, free feedback transformer, which uh, is a little difficult to get and uh, I'm actually still waiting for it. But um, when you hear this thing play, you'll realize that it doesn't really suffer much without it. I did the bypass as I've documented in a previous video, and um, it, the sound is absolutely amazing. What I found is that in terms of sound quality, especially on FM and using the pickup input, this thing surpasses by far any modern version um, that, that you could come up with. I actually prefer to listen to FM, especially music on FM, on this one, rather than using any of the modern versions that we have available. So, let's hear what it sounds like. To give you a better idea of the sound quality, I downloaded a copyright free clip and I'm feeding it into the pickup input of the set. Let's hear it. Recall this radio has four presets for tone control. These are controlled here, and uh, I had it in the middle setting, and the result can be seen on this display. Here we have very low bass, medium bass, average, higher bass. And the highest bass of all. I like to play it around here in the middle setting but I'm going to put the volume up and I'm going to swap between the middle setting and the others just to show you what happens. It's amazing how these radios can surprise you right through the process. And case in point is a discovery I made regarding these two buttons here. If you recall I mentioned earlier, one is narrow and one is wide. Now my understanding of it is that uh, if you're tuning on any of the AM bands and you want to narrow the, the selectivity, you push small, small, narrow, and it gives you better selectivity. 
especially if you've got a lot of channels next to each other. Uh, if you push bright, you'll get this widening up of the band and uh, it gives you less selectivity. Now that would be fine if you had uh, stereo AM or high quality hi-fi AM transmissions, which we don't have. So I thought these would be only useful in that context. But what I found is that um, even with the pickup input and also with the FM input, when I press bright, which is wide, it actually increases the um, frequency span of the signal, basically letting through a lot more higher frequencies, so I get better trouble. And I'll demonstrate it here. So when listening to music, that's the way I like to set it. I set it to just one up from the middle, there's the top, there's the next one down. Generally that would be too bassy, with not enough high end, but when I press the bright, it widens it up. It opens up the sound completely. It's brilliant. So here's a little demonstration of the other channels, of the actual radio channels. I put it on FM. Edição das duas com Augusto Henrique, simultâneo da Antena 1 com a Antena 1 Madeira e RTP Internacional. Lembro que a informação está em permanência na internet em antena.rtp.pt. Put that off quickly before I get copyright issues. Let's set it to medium wave and see what we got. As you can see, when I want better selectivity, I push the, the narrow band button and it seems to help. Long wave is a waste of time. I don't catch anything here on long wave, but I certainly do on short wave. Yeah. 
وأن هذه هي المنطقة And this is where the special function of this radio comes in. When on shortwave, um, this button here, the FM tuner, actually acts as a fine tuning for shortwave. It's called uh, the K loop function. And it has a dial here from 50 up to 0, all the way up to 50 again. So it's basically just a reference scale. And uh, when you leave this on 0, you move that to 0. Obviously the FM gets tuned out. Um, so when you leave that on 0 and you tune into a station or to a, a, a region of the dial, you can then select between uh, the stations that are very close to each other using only this function. And it works a lot better, obviously, with the narrowband switch uh, activated. So we'll show you how that works. And there we have it. The uh, shortwave demonstration was rather poor, but that's more owing to the lack of any great antenna than, uh, and also the time of day and geographic lo location that I'm in than anything else. There are times a day when this thing really picks up shortwave very clearly. Unfortunately, now is not one of them. The uh, finish that I did on the woodwork on the cabinet was to simply strip down or sand down the uh, lacquer, one or two thin layers of lacquer from the top to try and get rid of any scratches. And then uh, at the same time, obviously, I got to sand these down. These are those brass strips that go over the top. They were grummy, black, totally uh, disfigured, discolored. Now they're nice and shiny again. Then all I did was um, spray more lacquer on. A couple of layers of lacquer and nothing else. I actually like the look that this radio has. It has uh, an aged patina to it but um, it doesn't look nasty. It looks well aged and that's exactly the effect that I decided to leave on this radio. The knobs got a very good shining as well. All the buttons cleaned up. The markings on those piano buttons were repainted on with, uh, with a silver acrylic pen. Faceplate is impeccable.
And of course no demo would be complete without a look at the back end with the back plate removed. Everything was in pretty clean condition. Now it's clean and working well. The alignment's been looked at. Filter capacitor changed and restuffed as I've shown in a previous video. The selenium rectifier was swapped over for silicon diodes as I've also shown in a previous video. The speakers had absolutely nothing done to them except for a swap over of that uh, cap at the top there. Otherwise they are absolutely impeccable. One of my personal favorite touches is the fact that they've still got the date on there, 18th February 1953. It's on the other speaker as well. The internal antenna for FM had a slight uh, problem at the end here which I've temporarily tacked together with uh, hot glue till I find a substitute plug. You can't open this one up so I'm going to replace that. Other than that, the cosmetics of the inside needed very little work. So that's it. It's done. Almost sorry it's over. Not really. So what do you do next? Well, find another one and start again. That's what crazy people do and uh, I'm proud to consider myself one of them. Hope you enjoyed that series and uh, I hope perhaps it gave you a bit of courage to go ahead and do it yourself. Don't worry, the worst that can go wrong is that you can mess it up more, but hey, that's how you learn. Enjoy and see you soon.